So check this out. I've got this device here, a technology, something somebody created to solve a problem. It's basically a piece of origami made out of a single sheet of paper. Do you want to make one of these with me? Can you guess what it's for? Well, you might already know from the title of our booth. It's a phone stand. And somebody came up with the idea for this design because they needed a device that would let them keep their phone hands free. And still be able to view their phone and hold it upright off the table. Do you want to make one of these with me? I'm going to show you how to put one of these together in just a few minutes of your time. And then you'll have a chance to read over our design brief, which gives you instructions on the design challenge, which will be to take this device, this phone stand, and innovate it or make it better in any way that you want. And then submit a picture of your final design or any drawings or ideas you came up with up to our Padlet. Let's get started. I'm going to switch my camera over to the overhead view. And we're going to fold up this origami. Now, you don't have to be creative or innovative for this part of the design challenge. We're just going to follow along with these steps. And you can pause the video at any time to take your time, back up, rewind, to make sure that you put your model together the same way as I have mine. I'm going to use this orange sheet of paper and create the same piece here. Standard size sheet of paper. First thing we're going to do is fold our paper in half. We call this a hot dog fold. Next, we'll take our paper and fold it in half again. Another hot dog fold. Next, check that the flap opens up and faces your person or your body and that the crease you made is at the top pointing away from you. Next, we're going to estimate about halfway across this rectangle and I'm going to make a fold right down that imaginary center line and put a crease right in the middle. Once I made the crease, I'm going to open it back up. I can see that crease line there. I still have the crease at the top, this crease down the center, and the opening of the flap at the bottom. And right down this center line, we're going to take the right-hand side of, this, uh, of, the, of the material, and we're going to make a perpendicular fold. Right along that center line. So align with this crease. There we go. Kind of looks like the letter L, or even better, an R for Rutgers Day. Now, next thing we're going to do is take this entire piece and flip it upside down or away from ourselves 180 degrees. Now, when I check, the flap is here. This edge is creased. This edge can open up. This edge over here does not. It's creased. And along this line, we're going to take the top piece of material and fold it down over itself right along that crease in a perpendicular fold. Next. We're going to take the whole piece of material and flip it upside down again, away from ourselves, 180 degrees. How are you doing so far? All right, great. Next, we're going to take just this corner of this, of this side of the material, and we're going to fold it down. 
So it touches along this edge of the right triangle and creases up to the corner. Now, if you don't have this perfect, the point is that we at least are making a, a dog ear on this corner so that now the rest of this, the rest of this piece of material can be treated as one flap and it's going to fold over the long edge or the hypotenuse of this triangle right here, fold over. And the excess that's left behind after the fold will get tucked into this little pocket. So I'm going to fold this over. You can see that there's some overlapping material here just over that, that pocket. So the overlapping material is going to go into the pocket. Let's pick the whole thing up. I'm going to kind of open that pocket up there a little bit. Put the flap down inside. Crease it over nice and tight up against the bottom edge of the pocket you're tucking it into. How are we doing so far? All right. Okay, cool. Now, everybody's favorite part of origami is when the material that you're folding up goes from being flat to being three dimensional. Let's add another, let's add a whole other dimension to this thing. And we're going to open up the flap. All right, we got one side is creased, the other side opens up a little, and in the middle we have this flap. Let's open that flap up. Lay these two sides apart and bring this triangle down and you want what, I, what you want to try to do is make this back edge the straight line parallel to this edge and that may take some pulling so I'm going to grab by the little shark fin tail here and put some pressure down on this paper and hold it down while I pull in this direction back toward myself. Just try to crease that back a little bit so that, again, this line, this line is, is parallel to this line. Nice and even. All right. Okay, we're almost done. Next, I'm going to spin this around. So the shark fin is, the, 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 the whole device makes a point facing toward me. And I'm going to take both of these corners back here. And fold over a piece of the corner into a right triangle. And make an identical one just across from it here. How big should they be? Well... It could be about the size of your finger. And while we did that, you'll notice that this edge takes on the same angle that this edge does, because this is another pocket. And now to create that lip that the phone can sit on, we're gonna fold this whole flap back and tuck it into this pocket. And you'll see it's only going to go so far in until it hits against the wall. And that's what we want. Excellent. Next, we're going to take this, this flap and we're going to make two folds, one on top of the other, thinner than a pencil thinner than a pencil. There's one. Then we're going to fold that lip back on top of itself again. And now you'll see that forms a little triangle shape of its own. And this acts as a lip for the edge of your phone. And then the triangle, the shark fin in the back, acts as a support. Do you have it finished? Do you have a phone or a personal device on you that you could try this out on and 
See how well your hands-free viewing device works? Let me back over to my other camera. Pretty cool, right? I've got an old iPhone here, so it's really small. You know, and as you as you try out this thing, see how it works. You might need to turn it on. Use your phone with some of your different apps. I like how there's a nice angle to it here. I like how it's inexpensive. It can be made anytime, anywhere, as long as you just have a sheet of paper. And it definitely holds that phone up so that you can do other things while looking at your phone and have your hands free. So this solves somebody's problem. Somebody wanted a hands-free device. You know, I wonder, I wonder what other problems you could solve if you were to continue to design or redesign an innovative phone stand. What could you do to make this better? Are there problems out there that you could solve? Are there different people's needs and wants? You know, other people have done this activity before, and I want to show you some pictures of things that they created. Let's take a look. So in this design challenge, people are asked to take a look at this existing device, the one that we just made together, and think about how it could be better. Because what engineers and designers do as a profession is solve problems. And there's no shortage of problems out there that could be solved with this device or do something with it to make somebody's life easier or better or improve something. What do you think some of the reasons, some of the different uh, innovations we see here we're supposed to do? See, this one's holding some different devices on it, like a stylus. This one has an opening for the power cord to come up during charging. That's right, our device didn't do that. Oh, look at this. This one protects you from the sun glare so that it makes it easier to see your screen. Hmm. Our device didn't do that either. Are you starting to see ideas for how you could make a better phone stand? All you have to do is find some supplies that you have laying around, even if it's just tape, colored pencils, virtually anything could be used as a supply or a material. One of the easiest ways to approach this design challenge is to think of a specific person or a group of people. We call that a demographic that you think would love to have one of these phone stands, but you would think of exactly how you could innovate the phone stand so that it would be better for them or solve a problem for them or make their hands-free viewing experience better. Some of these are so neat. All of these ideas, look at this one. This one's just a hand made out of, looks like tin foil. This one looks like it sits on the beach, it has a shade up here something to keep it off the sand. Maybe there's moving parts and features. Maybe things can come on and off. Wow, this one must be for what? Yeah, somebody who didn't, whose phone was gigantic or maybe an iPad. This looks like one that the phone can stick to and then rotate around 360 degrees. Made from bottle caps and marbles, popsicle sticks, and an old roll of tape. Here's one that amplifies the sound. Look at all these neat ideas. So as we scroll through some pictures here for inspiration, I'm gonna show you a document called the Design Brief. It's one page long. It explains the challenge as we've just discussed it, where you are going to have the original phone stand that you just created the origami version. And when you click on the link for the design brief handout, you can view it or download it. It gives you the background problem that you've been given this original phone stand device, but guess what? It's not good enough. You can make it better for yourself or for somebody else. If you wanted to shoot for some engineering requirements, 
you could try things like picking a specific demographic, trying to improve the form and the function, not just the way it looks, but also how it works. Can you incorporate a moving part or feature? And can you continue to offer the hands-free viewing experience, but in such a way that it's better for somebody else? Spend as little or as much time as you'd like. And when you're done, we'd love you to click on ahead to the Padlet link where we invite, where we've created a gallery. And right now, I'm the only one that's posted there. But when you get to this gallery at any time after Rutgers Day or during Rutgers Day, you can post up a picture of what you created. But it doesn't even have to be a picture of a final thing that you built. You might have just drawn up some ideas that would be really cool that you want to share. Um, or maybe you want to um, interview yourself or somebody else talking about their ideas and post them up here. Uh, any stuff that you've created, ideas, drawings, pictures, actual models or prototypes, you testing out the thing that you created, uh, feel free to share them up here so that we can like and comment on them. Thanks again for stopping at our booth to do the innovative phone stand design challenge. As you'll see, there's no limit to the things that you could come up with. All right, well, good luck. Thanks for stopping by. Again, my name is Chris, and I hope to see uh, some of your pictures and thoughts and ideas models, prototypes, anything you created for making a better phone stand up there on the Padlet. Thanks again.